From the town they call Fort Fun, college football presented by GEICO. We welcome you to an evening of college football on the edge of the Rockies. For just the second time, an SEC team visits Fort Collins, Colorado. With John Shriffen, Aaron Taylor, I'm Carter Blackburn. In praise of some of the wacky non-conference road trips that get made this time of year in college football, thanks to some scheduling quirks that go all the way to Michigan, you have Arkansas, an SEC team, in Fort Collins, Colorado. And this is only the first time that Arkansas has ever traveled west to the Mountain West for a true road game. So anything can happen, as we saw from Arizona and North Carolina earlier today. Arkansas's new head coach, Chad Morris, 1-0. The offense look good in week one the defense looked even better yeah defensive coordinator John Chavis a veteran in the SEC 23 year career his unit was firing on all cylinders six fumbles they recovered four or five of those rather they were playing physical flying around the football they've got to be able to do that on the road because this Colorado State team offensively can get some things going well, the Rams are 0-2, but the offensive numbers were very good in Week 0 versus Hawaii. Then last week, rivalry matchup against the Buffaloes, not so good. This offense needs consistency. They have the ability to have some big plays, but they've got to play better and more focused than they did a week ago. I really think the running game is critical to the Rams' success tonight. And for more on Colorado State and their head coach, Mike Bobo, let's check in with John Shriffen. Well, Carter, thank you so much. When we spoke to head coach Mike Bobo yesterday, he explained to us that he still has the occasional rough day here or there, but for the most part, he is feeling a lot better since spending 10 days in the hospital right before the season started, diagnosed with peripheral neuropathy, which is a numbness in the feet. Now, he told us he's not with his offensive staff 100% of the time just yet, so because of that, he'll keep with the plan. Quarterback coach Ronnie Letson will be the one calling plays again today, and for the second week in a row, head coach Mike Bobo will be on the sideline. He told us it's important to be down here with his guys to be able to make adjustments on the fly if necessary. Carter? And already a big decision from Colorado State head coach Mike Bobo won the toss deferred. So that means Arkansas will receive the kick. Chad Morris, first season as Arkansas head coach after the head coaching stint at SMU. A college, a, a high school football coaching legend in the state of Texas, offensive coordinator Clemson. As we take a look at tonight's weather report, brought to you by B and W trailer hitches. 79 degrees, cloudy, but thankfully the skies are holding off at this point for the Rams and the Razorbacks. A lot of red here at Canvas Stadium. And the Arkansas fans who've rolled into Fort Collins, Colorado, have made their presence known. Good student section turnout for the 0-2 Colorado State Rams. The Arkansas Razorbacks from the SEC against the Colorado State Rams from the Mountain West Conference. Just the fourth meeting between them. Last time they met, Arkansas was in the Southwest Conference. Colorado State was in the WAC. Neither league exists in 2018. Braxton Davis kickoff will be a touchback and Arkansas has the football at the 25 yard line to begin as we take a look at our Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And we begin with Arkansas's offense and tie story, already a legend in Charleston, Arkansas, where he led the Tigers to back-to-back -back 3A state titles. In his first three years in Fayetteville, played sparingly, but last week off the bench versus Eastern Illinois. Tie story impressive enough to earn his first start at quarterback for the Razorbacks as a redshirt junior. Story on first down is going to pull it, pass it, and it is already a gain of nine plus against the Colorado State defense that has struggled. Austin Cantrell makes the grab. Hey, keep your eye tonight on number 62, Johnny Gibson, the right guard. Certainly he's got some experience around him, Brian Wallace and Yelda Froholt at that right tackle and center position. Ty story was a story a week ago, but the running game better be a story tonight. That means Gibson and his boys better get it done up front. Average just two yards per rush against Eastern Illinois, and not much better on this one as Warren is dropped. 
No gain. Let's take a look at the Ram defense, the much maligned Ram defense. Yeah, well, keep your eye on that guy. Raylan Scott, number 18. He's a good guy replacing Jamal Hicks, the veteran. They felt like they needed some help at the safety position. Really been a position that's given them some problems with some mismatches, some bad eyes, some bad reads. They've got to tackle better tonight. The Rams do. And Arkansas is going to make that a challenge for them. On second and 22, Story winds up and it picked off. A takeaway by the Ram defense on the opening position. Jordan Fogel, the sixth year player. Like on the field, it's an interception. First down, Colorado State. The graduate transfer from Utah with a much needed boost for Colorado State. This was just miscommunication for Arkansas. The ball was thrown a little bit behind. The receiver tried to break on it, but it ended up being a perfect pass, unfortunately, to Jordan Vogel. This is the exact sort of start this Colorado State team has needed, Carter. We talked about it. They've had these slow starts. There was a lot of doubt creeping in. A play like that against an SEC opponent is just the sort of juice you need. So you saw the receiver, Michael Petway, slip, and it ends up in the hands of Jordan Fogel, who Mike Bobo said was critical leadership-wise with this defense, keeping him in pace after a long first couple of games. So K.J. Carter Samuels to the outside. There's Preston Williams, and Williams has a grab. That's a big boost for Colorado State. Chick-fil-A starting lineups for the Rams. K.J. Carter Samuels already a football journey from Bellarmine Prep, the University of Washington graduate transfer here. He wins a starting job, record-setting debut. Two weeks later, takes a beating against the Buffaloes, and now Mike Bobo says they expect to play both K.J. Carter Samuels and Colin Hill. So despite that record-setting debut, he's fighting for his job. And on second and seven, over the middle, misfire there. Big misfire intended for Cameron Butler, the tight end. Again, a little bit of early miscommunication there as well, not being on the same page. But going back to K.J. Carter Samuels, against Colorado, he faced a lot of pressure. This offensive line gave up three sacks. There, the protection is good. As a quarterback, you have to have poise and not feel that rush. That's going to be something for us to keep an eye on tonight. Can K.J. Carter Samuels sit in that pocket Keep out the rush, keep his eyes downfield, and throw the football on target. On that last one, he did not. Third down, exotic blitzes, the specialty of John Chavis. Pass complete again, Preston Williams well short of the first down as Ryan Pulley, the junior corner. Armand Watts put the pressure. Fourth down, you're kind of in no man's land I here. I say you go for it. You don't even think about it. You go for it. You have some momentum. It doesn't look like they're going to do that. This is a little bit more conservative. With that juice that they had there, a third and medium is very makeable, particularly in no man's land. But Bobo electing to play it safe, which is understandable, but I really would have liked to have seen them gone for this here on fourth down. So this is a 55-yard field goal attempt from Wyatt Bryan. 0 for 2. The last time he kicked in this stadium in week zero. After the takeaway from the defense, a 55-yard field goal attempt is easily good. And Colorado State is on the board from 55 yards out. Wyatt Bryan and the Rams lead for the first time in 2018. A takeaway by the defense turns into three points from 55 yards away. Colorado State on top. Took three weeks. Finally, a lead. One of our favorite camera operators anywhere, Crash Vandenhobel shot this near Crested Butte, and fortunately there was no... That's a very unfortunate ride, name for somebody ride. that likes to mountain bike ride. Fortunately, fortunately didn't happen. So another touchback, Arkansas will get it at the 25. Let's take a look at the keys of the game brought to you by America's Navy. Well, I think Arkansas has to start fast and create some doubt. They did not do that offensively, turning the ball over. Defensively, they have to limit explosive plays. They did good on that first drive. The offensive line for Colorado State, they've got to run the ball at least 4.5 yards per carry. And the defense, we've already seen it. They need some juice plays, some turnovers, some sacks, some tackles for loss. On the first series, they get an interception that led to three points. That's a great start. Ty's story back out for series number two. We expect to see Cole Kelly play as well. 
Handing off on first down, Devois Whaley. Good push through the left side across the 35-yard line. Arkansas moves the chains in the run game with Whaley. And that was Kirby Adcock, the left guard. And Devois Whaley just getting to that second level. Tackling and getting off blocks has been a problem for this defense. They've got to do a better job at the line of the scrimmage to protect their linebackers. Catching the Rams, still lining up. Whaley, good push after contact. Braylon Scott, strong safety, makes the tackle. This is hard on offensive linemen to run at this pace, and that was one of the things that Chad Morris had to do was to get these offensive linemen to change their bodies, get them into the weight room, run them so that they would be in cardiovascular condition to run at this pace, and it seems to have worked. It's Gatlin and Caps on the left side of the offensive line now. And off, Whaley again, another good push forward after contact to make it third and one. This time, Tanner Clem, freshman on the tackle. If you're Colorado State, you have to be able to disengage, read your keys, cancel gaps, squeeze the blocks, and make the tackle. Here's a great opportunity for them to get themselves off the field. Also, don't rule out play action here in midfield. Third and one. Little miscommunication, but Whaley takes it anyway and easily picks up. The first down, Max McDonald, the Will linebacker, brings him down. Arkansas moves the chains. A clear effort on this third series to run the football. I think it's going to give them the best chance to be able to move the ball. And let's be honest, Carter, this Rams defense just hasn't been able to stop anybody on the ground. Colorado gashed them a week ago. So this is a pretty good and safe and expected strategy here offensively for Arkansas. Four straight carries for Whaley. He gets a break. Chase Hayden is in the backfield. Hayden will take it, bounce it outside. Hayden inside the 45, slipping through tackles. And Aaron, uh, since we saw this last week, outside contain yeah, an buddy. issue for the Rams. If you're a defense, you have to set the edge. Keep your eye on number 55, Josh Watson. He gets grabbed a little bit, but there's nobody there that can force the running back back inside. Your entire defense breaks down when that happens. Whaley's back there for second down, shaking his way, moving the chains again. Looks like Whaley got enough. So you talk about the bad defense. I mean, in the in the first two games this season, look at the first half numbers. I mean, 10 yards a pass, seven yards a rush. Yikes. And that's why the improvement was the interception leading to three points was so important for this team. But another third and short. Remember, the Rams are without Richard King, their defensive end. Can they get themselves off the field here? Yeah. Story hands off. That's Whaley on the left side. Whaley falling. For a first down inside the 15, gain of 12 as the Razorbacks try to take advantage of the offsides on the kick. Just a beautiful job of creating a wall and sealing this. Everybody's blocked, allowing for the big run. Story handing off again. Wheelie another good push again inside the 10. Thomas makes the stop. Let's take a look at tonight's red zone brought to you by Verizon. Five trips, three touchdowns last week against Eastern Illinois. Razorbacks are pretty good last year, 75% touchdowns really in the red zone. Really, really good a year ago. Second down. And it again. Whaley again, pushing down to the two. First and goal, Arkansas on a drive where the Rams had them stopped. The offsides on the missed field goal, now giving Arkansas a chance to put it in the end zone. Colorado State should expect run here. They haven't been able to stop it yet. Whaley. Wow. Walks into the end zone. And I mean walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Razorbacks. It was supposed to be a zero for Arkansas. Instead, it turns into a 14-play touchdown drive, and the Razorbacks take the lead. Great job of covering everybody up, but then they stop and shut down the play. Devin Phillips stopped on the play. He had an opportunity to get a tackle for a loss. That's about as terrible of a turn of events as you could have defensively for the Colorado State Rams. The Hogs answer the call. 
Devwall Whaley now has eight straight games of the touchdown, either rushing or receiving. Dare I say this might have been the easiest. This is all about playing to the whistle. It's one thing to get blocked. Colorado State fits it up pretty good, but then everybody's looking around. You got people that don't know where the ball's going. You got a good job setting the edge, but the play's not over. To me, Colorado State shut it down, didn't play to the whistle, and that is inexcusable. They've got to do something, Carter, to be able to stop this run game because Arkansas is having their way with them at the line of scrimmage. Has to be a boost for the Razorbacks as well, struggling starting offensively last week and this week. That was supposed to be a zero drive. Instead, touchdown for Whaley. Hawkins is going to take it. Hawkins across the 20, near the 25. Pretty good field position for the Rams. Well, I think it's uh, a, a essential the Colorado State runs a football tonight. For them to do that, their center, Colby Meeks, a returning starter. He's their most experienced returning lineman. This unit was very good a year ago. Lost two first-team all-conference players. They haven't been able to run the ball, but they're going to need to tonight. Hand off. McElroy, and he is dropped for a loss. Armand Watts and T.J. Smith in the middle of the Arkansas defensive line. Blow it up. Watch the center right there in the middle of your screen. Just a nice job of the nose tackle, Armand Watts, beating his player one-on-one. -on -one. Remember, at the top of the show in the lineups, I said Colby Meeks needs to lead this crew up front. That was not what I meant on that last play. Ooh. K.J. Carter Samuels, third drive. The graduate transfer from Washington, deep complete to guess who? Preston Williams with his fourth grab of the first quarter. And now we take a look at the Arkansas defense. Well, the best player on this team is not going to be playing tonight in Dre Greenlaw, so keep your eye on his replacement, Bumper Pool. Do not adjust your TV set. That is actually his name. We'll get into that in a little bit. But he's a square-jawed, blue-collar throwback at the position. Had a huge game a week ago. He's got some really big shoes to fill here on the road. Rams hurry it up and then check. Got a single high look defensively this time. One high safety. You've got some one-on-one -on -one opportunities you can maybe take advantage of here. Play action. There he is. Downfield intended for Williams again. It is intercepted. Ryan Pulley picks it off. Ryan Pulley holds it in. So they try to go to Williams one more time. And the junior from Fort Myers, Florida, Ryan Pulley, teams have avoided throwing to his side, and you see why. It was a great release. He had him, but he has to throttle down and come back on the ball. It was almost like he was trying to throw a back shoulder. But we may need to take a look at this to make sure that Pulley caught it. That's a catch and an interception. And another costly mistake by a team that can ill afford them. And Ryan Pulley, who missed all of last year with a right torn peck, that he sustained in game one comes up here huge on the road with the interception. Each team has a takeaway. Razorbacks touchdown last time they had the football. It is Ty Story again. And Ty Story's going to hand off to Rakeem Boyd trying the right side. Another good push forward by Boyd. Gets three. That's Yelda Froholt, the senior center, shaking up a little bit. Froholt was a guard a year ago. He's their best and most experienced offensive lineman, taking them a little bit to get adjusted to this center position. It's one thing when you're a guard, don't have to snap the ball and you have two hands to use. Now he's got to step it and then snap it and remember the snap count. Not that easy. Shovel, that's Boyd on the right side. Boyd wrestled out of bounds after another first down. Emmanuel Jones rides him out of bounds, and that will bring the first quarter to an end. So Colorado State gets on the board first, 3-0, the only time the Rams have led in 2018. They had the Razorbacks stopped, but Arkansas pushes through. Woo, pick suing. 7-3, Razorbacks. On the game's lone touchdown drive, Devwa Whaley carried it nine times, including into the end zone for Arkansas. He's been the story of this game so far, running behind that offensive line. He's got patience, he's got bursts, he's got physicality. 
it's been all him on the ground tonight and that offensive line which struggled in my opinion a week ago is getting themselves right and healthy good patience there to be able to get himself into the end zone Carter a week ago he had 10 carries for 28 yards already eclipsing what he did last week in the first quarter so keep it on the ground again Dev Wall Whaley pushing near the 50 yard line and we heard it from the Razorback coaches and really fans all week to say all right two yards per carry versus Eastern Illinois Colorado State defensively has struggled we have to get the ground game going against Colorado State and after uh, a slow start that's exactly what the Razorbacks are doing and what this is going to do is tire out this defense that has a ton of injuries and isn't very deep to begin with so six yards per carry and now story hit as he throws downfield Jones it's incomplete here come two flags Ajayi and Darius Campbell in coverage on Jordan Jones pass interference number four defense 15 yard penalty from the previous spot automatic first down that ball was a little underthrown. that was just a two receiver route with a check down but because Jones has to throttle down on it, Ajayi just makes contact with him and doesn't allow him to get the ball. There's no such thing as face guarding, but he hit his arms before the ball got there. Hayden on the carry has to leap over a defender. And then Pagofi, Livingston Pagofi, sophomore from Arlington, Texas, makes the tackle, gain of only one. Nice job on first down there for Colorado State. Story hands off again. Hayden bounces it outside, finds the seam. Hayden has the edge inside the 20. With a stiff arm, he takes it down to the 16-yard line. Chase Hayden, the sophomore from Memphis, a gain of 18. Arkansas is crushing Colorado State up front. Nobody's coming off their blocks. The receivers are getting downfield, and it's at will running. It was two possessions ago. They took it 14 plays, 73 yards. The game's only touchdown, and now the Razorbacks are rolling again inside the 15. Yelled to Froholt, the center, number 51, slow to get up there. He's been ginger a couple times getting up. But we talked to Chad Morris this week. He said about the run game. He said, I've been doing this a long time. I promise you this, I can fix it. We will get the ground game going. And here it is in the second quarter. Jeez. And it again, Aiden again, falling to the 11 to bring up third down. Anthony Hawkins, the backup cornerback, coming off the outside edge. He also had the offsides on the field goal attempt. Missed the tackle in the hole. This is now a third medium down here in the red zone. Play action is a killer down here for Colorado State. You have to be very disciplined with your eyes. Toss it. Hammonds has it. Tripped off and dropped to the 10 yard line. It's Josh Watson, the senior from Blue Springs, Missouri, to force fourth down for Arkansas. The kicking unit is on. Josh Watson had 15 tackles a week ago, led them a year ago in tackles. This is how you want to read your keys offensively. He sees it right away. He closes the angle, grabs him by the ankles. That's a textbook tackle that saved a touchdown, forcing Arkansas for the field goal. Well, Limpert missed from 49 earlier, but because the penalty didn't count. And now he boots this one through to make it 10-3 Arkansas. So not perfect for the Razorbacks, but they lead it by a touchdown. Welcome back here to Fort Collins, Colorado, as the Razorbacks lead 10-3 right now. And Arkansas head coach Chad Morris has a very unique situation. He is juggling not only being a head coach, but also being the father to a highly recruited high school quarterback. Now, to make sure he doesn't miss any of his games, Coach Morris has to get very creative with his schedule. Take a look at what his Friday before games look like. At Friday morning, he's with the team at practice. He doesn't make sure to miss any Arkansas responsibilities. Then when the team headed up here to Fort Collins, he got on a separate flight to 
Dallas. He was there for the 7.30 kickoff of the son Chandler Morris at Highland Park. They won that game. Then at 11.30 p.m., he left on a private flight that got here in time for the 10, 10 a.m. first meeting of the day. Didn't miss any responsibilities. He said he wanted to make sure he shows his guys it's important to be a family man. Guys. I love that. And I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Bad decision to come mm -hmm. out. Fair catch that get it at the 25. I mean that cost you about 12 yards of field position right there for the Rams. First and 15. Curtis Samuels nearly picked. I mean nearly picked by Cameron Curl, who would have been a few yards from the end zone. And that's fortunate that's an incompletion by KJ Carter Samuels rather than a pick six. Certainly was. Cameron Curl was a cornerback last year, started 11 games from him in man coverage. Does a nice job out there on the perimeter, breaking on that ball and almost got himself another interception. That's five straight incompletions by the two Ram quarterbacks, Hill and Carter Samuels. They got to push this ball down the field. Too much underneath stuff. Take some deep shots. Underneath again, incomplete again. Six straight incompletions. I'm with you, AT. You got to take, you got to do something downfield. This receiving core, Cameron Butler, their tight end, 6'2", Ola B.C. Johnson, 6'0", Preston Williams, 6'4", Trey McBride, a tight end, 6'4", Griffin Hammer, a tight end, 6'4". Take some 50-50 balls. They had a shot down the field that I think could have went for a touchdown, but there was miscommunication. K.J. Carter Samuels goes back shoulder and ends up being an interception. Third and 15, they're forced to throw it deep here. Bumper pool on the outside. Carter Samuels tipped and incomplete. Harris got his hands on the football. Dejon Harris. Scooter. Well, that's two almost picks on that possession. It's back to back three and outs for the Rams. This Arkansas defense led by John Chavis, the savvy veteran, 23 years in the SEC. Seems to be a step ahead of Colorado State offensively, certainly in the pass game, and the run game is simply non existent. This defense is going to be worn out before we get to halftime here. The Rams got to get something going offensively. Stonehouse gets it away from his own end zone. Cornelius backing up. Cornelius lets it bounce again, and now Cornelius just has to back away. So Stonehouse flips the field. I like how Stonehouse gave it a gave it a little golf move there, like a perfect pitching wedge. Well done. On the scoreboard here in Fort Collins, Colorado, Arkansas 10, Colorado State threes. We started looking at the back of the book. Rakeem Boyd. I mean, that was a that was a push for a gain of five more yards. Uh, VJ Banks missed the tackle, and then just a little bump from Pagofi. Actually, I think that was like a bush yeah. push to give him seven more yards. You saw that, right? Right. No wrapping up, just push him. That's lack of effort, and that's a defense that looks defeated to me. Here you go. And Boyd will take it inside the 50. Boyd finally brought down inside the 35 yard line for Colorado State a gain of 36. I love this pulling your center and kicking out. It's a good scheme. It gashes them. Thomas gets himself out of the hole. I mean that was a five yard wide hole card. I might have been able to pick up 10 or 12 on that one. <laughs> this offensive line is doing a nice job at the point of attack and this is really what we saw a week ago from Colorado. Just running power football up inside, and the Rams have no answer. Good. I mean, being down there on the field before the game, there's a noticeable difference between the Jimmys and Joes on these respective rosters. Arkansas is considerably bigger on the lines of scrimmage than this Colorado State team. Keep it on the ground. Why not? Boyd. There we go. Gets three more. Watson on the stop there. At some point. If you're a player on this Rams defense, it's about heart. It's about want to. It's not going pretty. But what I'm seeing that's concerning at times is the lack of effort, not wrapping up, missing tackles, bad body language. Uh, on a bright spot, Josh Watson and I both agree on the best burn ends in KC. <laughs> LCs. Really enjoyed our conversation with him. There's a discrepancy in the ground game. And now in the pass game, this is Jones, block on the edge. And he will take it to the 11, correction. 
That is Jeremy Patton who makes the grab. The senior tight end from Indianapolis, and he gets 18. He's just going to run, come across his line of scrimmage, slips out. Late recognition there that time by the Rams. From the 11, Boyd takes it, pushing to the seven yard line on first down. Colorado State a couple different times has bowed themselves up on third down, forcing field goals by Arkansas. Penalty negated one of those after a missed field goal. This is a good opportunity to bow their neck. It's been dominant, but if they can hold Arkansas to a field goal, that could be a little silver lining to an afternoon that hadn't been so pretty so far. Story pulls it, and he is dropped for a sack. Emmanuel Jones on second down drops Story back near the 15-yard line to force third down, not third and goal. First down line to the wall. Here he is at the bottom of the screen on the right. He reads it and reacts back out. A nice job that time by Jordan Fogel coming up from that second level to set the edge to force Story go down. Bring some pressure, Colorado State. Plenty of time. Razorbacks have only one timeout, though. Oh, Blake Log winding down third and 12. Story stepping up, hit from behind to the end zone. It is incomplete. And the Rams will force another field goal attempt from Arkansas. Jared Cornelius, the intended receiver, and Emmanuel Jones puts another lick on Ty Story, a sack and a pressure. It was a combination of Emmanuel Jones and also the linebacker Josh Watson. Watch him sink and turn and run right there. Blocks the vision of Cornelius. And again, a ball that's thrown a little bit low and behind. If you're Cornelius, you have to come down with it, but that would have been an extremely tough catch to make. Lippert hit from 28 and now 31. Arkansas, three more. Well, the Rams keep him out of the end zone. 13-3, Razorbacks on the road. You just knew when the Razorbacks averaged only two yards per rush against Eastern Illinois, there would be a renewed commitment in this game mission accomplished well, they've certainly found their mojo averaging 6.5 yards per carry dominating at the line of scrimmage running through tackles creating huge holes in the trenches this is a great way to get yourself healthy if you're trying to run the football Carter Samuel still in a quarterback for the Rams Hill got one possession, seven straight incompletions, comes to an end with that completion. Kenzie out of the backfield, down the sideline. Kenzie delivers a blow as he goes out of bounds near the 45, and you can see how the Rams sideline reacts to that gain of 20. This is what they've been going to on first down. Keep an eye on his feet. Great job tiptoeing on the sideline. Colorado State wanting to use pace here after the first down. Kenzie takes it again, gets a couple. Colorado That's State will be at Florida next week. That was one of those scheduling quirks. Jim McElwain goes from Colorado State to Florida. By the time the game comes around, he's not in Gainesville anymore. Curtis Samuels throw complete. That's the big red shirt freshman tight end, Griffin Hammer for a first down. Preston Williams puts his helmet back on. That is a good sign for the Rams. Yes, it is, because he is a absolute threat in the red zone with his height and ability to get open. Number 11 would be huge down here. 4.20 to go in the second. Carter Samuels, hands off. Kinsey pushing for a couple more. Dejon Harris in the middle. Well, Williams is ready to go. They're going to keep him on the sideline at least for second down. And this is interesting. Let's keep an eye on the clock. Arkansas only has one touchdown, or excuse me, one timeout. They've been able to effectively run the football, but not necessarily pass it. So the more time Colorado State can eat up here, the better. And off again, shoved back. This time it's Rashad Body, the senior at a Skyline High School in Washington. He was suspended the first two. And now here comes Preston Williams back into the game for third down. Dollars to donuts. Where is K.J. Carter Samuels going to target on this I'm going to guess number 11, the Tennessee transfer, the junior from Lovejoy, Georgia. <laughs> Only two third down conversions thus far for the Rams. Carter Samuels zips it. Oh. It is almost. 
almost picked again. That's the third dropped interception by Arkansas. They have won. This time it's Jarquez McClellan who nearly picked it. Carter Samuels doing a nice job looking the safety off. But that ball's a little bit late. Preston Williams has to come back on it. And Jarquez McClellan, to your point, Carter, almost got an interception. We've seen these guys make a longer field goal than this. This would be a huge way to finish this drive for the Rams. From 46 after Bryant hit from 55, and this one is good. So field goal for Colorado State, three minutes to go before the half. Arkansas has marched down the field in the run game against the Rams, but because the Razorbacks have only put it in the end zone once, 13 to six, and Colorado State feels a little mojo after a 10-play, 47-yard drive. Yes, it only ends in three for Colorado State, but clearly the Razorbacks should be up bigger than 13 to six at this point, and the Rams are hanging in the game. Colorado State means they've got to get some pressure here, but. How you finish this drive, particularly because Colorado State gets the ball back to start the second half, is crucial. Warren will not have a chance to return this one. The SEC's best kick returners. For a hurry-up team, two minutes and 40 seconds is plenty before the half. But... Colorado State has to be very disciplined with their eyes and not get beaten on play action trying to bring their safeties up and fill the hole. And yet the Razorbacks content to run it, haven't thrown it yet on this drive. It's been Hayden, all Chase Hayden, to the 45-yard line. Here comes a throw. Or a handoff. One of the two. Hayden again. Second and medium is a great time to take that shot. They're being extremely conservative here. Running the football. A minute 23 left. One timeout. They're being awfully complacent. At some point, they're going to have to put this ball in the air. Again, Colorado State's been pretty good on third down, but in the red zone, how can they get themselves off the field out here in the middle? Whaley's going to motion out, so it's empty backfield for third and three. With a minute left, Story hit as he throws it, picked off, intercepted. Back to the 45-yard line, Emmanuel Jones, and it's the Rams who get the football with 57 seconds before the half. The second takeaway by the Ram defense. Watson lays the lick on Story. Jones gets the pick. This is just the old cross dog blitz inside this young offensive line. There's only five of them. They don't come off. Story has to throw the football a little too early, a little too soon. Emmanuel Jones at the right place at the right time, and Story gets blasted. And I mean blasted. He's still thinking about it and still feeling it. So Story takes the helmet off. K.J. Carter Samuels and the Colorado State offense. With a chance, with a touchdown and a PAT to be tied at the half with Arkansas. Pump, toss, caught. And it's Butler who makes the grab. First down, Colorado State. One time out for the Rams. Butler, the athletic tight end with good quicks, does a nice job of just running a simple corner route, puts his foot in the ground, creates some separation, and a beautifully thrown ball on time. Carter Samuels, incomplete, looking like he was going to Butler against. That stops the clock with 48 seconds. One timeout in case you need to get that field goal unit out there. You want to save that timeout to try and get the field goal unit onto the field. I mean, th this first half, they've been through the first two games. They gave up 64 points to their opponents. Just 13 on the board for Arkansas. And now the Rams, after the second takeaway, a chance for a huge score before the half. They throw over the middle. They got to get past the first down marker so that the clock stops. Carter Samuels on second and 10. He's hit as he throws. It's incomplete. He took a pop from McTelvin Aguim to force third and 10. McTelvin Aguim just working over the right side. Over the tackle comes off the edge. Carter Samuels does a nice job staying in there. Looked like on film a week ago against Colorado that he had happy feet. He stood in there tall, but he paid for it. 
from here would be a 44-yard field goal well within Wyatt Bryan's range. So that factors into the third down play call. Be conservative here. Don't do what Arkansas did and turn the ball over on third down. And yet, Carter Samuels pumps. It's tipped and it's incomplete. Batted at the line. So you get nothing after you pick up that big first down from Butler. And now fourth and ten. Bryan will come on for the field goal attempt. But you're going to leave Arkansas some time on the clock before the half. McTelvin again gets a take game ball for this final series. He showed up huge. You have to take over as a defensive lineman, and he did that, forcing the field goal here. Really nice job that series by Arkansas to force the field goal. 44 yard attempt for Bryant, looking for his third of the half from 40 plus, and it is good. Wyatt Bryant in week zero over two, a factor in why Colorado State lost to Hawaii, but off the interception. The third field goal of the half he is hit from 55, 46, and 44. And as you pointed out, Colorado State will receive the second half kickoff, so the Rams have a chance with a touchdown drive to take a lead in the third quarter against the Arkansas Razorbacks. 217 rushing yards in the first half for Arkansas, but only one touchdown to show for it. And we got a game at the half in Fort Collins, Colorado. 13 to nine, Arkansas in the lead, but not feeling comfy yet. Back in Fort Collins, Colorado, Canvas Stadium, 13 to nine, Arkansas on top of Colorado State. First Arkansas trip to a Mountain West Conference foe. John Schriffen on the sideline, Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor. Razorbacks have the lead, but dare I say, Razorback fans and probably coaching staff not too happy with the first half. Well, to win on the road, you got to bring your running game and your defense. They certainly have done that, but they haven't converted in the red zone to take advantage of what's been a really impressive night on the ground. Rams won the opening toss and deferred, so out of the end zone, and this is Hawkins takes the pop. And that's a difference of about five yards had he taken the touchback to the 20. So let's take a look at the Snickers first half stats. And I think there's going to be one that stands out above the rest, A.T. You think about that one rushing yard for Colorado State, but also keep your eye right there. Arkansas has dominated at the line of scrimmage at the time of possession. Colorado State defensively doesn't have a lot of depth to begin. But against a team that likes to run in the second half, they're going to get tested significantly, in my opinion. So you put up those rushing numbers, that discrepancy in total yards, but because the Razorbacks have gone one for three touchdowns in the red zone, chance for the Rams. This is Fulton, takes it out to the 39-yard line. Fulton picks up 19 yards on the first snap of the second half. Watch how comfortable K.J. Carter Samuels is back there. Perfectly timed ball, Fulton call it even 20 and then Matthews loses a couple man come on now they struggled to run early on in this game we saw the one rush yard Arkansas just dominating at the line of scrimmage this offensive line that's is largely rebuilt for Colorado State struggling with the front seven of the Razorbacks so that's now negative rushing yards in the game for Colorado State they had a minus eight with a sack early on in the first quarter it's been tough for them up front running the ball KJ Carter Samuels started at quarterback. Colin Hill played one possession. It was a three and out. So Carter Samuels to the air, to the outside. This is Fulton. He has the first two catches of the second half and goes scrambling out of bounds for a gain of eight. Callaway missed the tackle. Fulton's now doubled his season receiving receptions rather had one coming into this game and has become an early target early on he's more of a slot type player that can get the ball and make people miss in space a sure handed target I wonder if the coaching staff is a little bit worried about some of the drops that they've seen from the other receivers and Ola BC Johnson number 81 has been extremely quiet tonight third and two Wise and Kinsey in the backfield. Wise motions out, going to toss it to him. Wise behind the line, slips ahead and drops. So go a little trick play with Wise motioning out. It loses yards, and it brings up fourth down. The Rams will have to punt. Gabe Richardson on the stop. So you use a timeout prior to third down. You draw up a wrinkle. It loses yards, and you're punting again. And this was a 
opportunity for the Rams to go down, score a touchdown, and take the lead. I didn't mind that play call. It actually was a well-designed play. He just got beat out on the edge in the perimeter. Credit Arkansas's defense for fighting off blocks, doing something the Colorado State's really struggled with. If you're the Rams here, you want a deep punt that's super high to let your coverage get down there to try and flip this field and make Arkansas drive the long way. Looks like Coach Bobo got a new headset as Stonehouse hits it. Inside the 10, fair catch. 13-9, Arkansas football. Whipper will from right here in Fort Collins. Stacy, Alicia, Tobias. Friday stadium sessions available on KRFC 88.9. Terrific way to kick off the football game weekend. Soon as the Rams wrap up practice on Friday at Canvas Stadium. Credit to Tom Milligan, Jill Parker. A terrific Friday event here on campus. In fact, uh, Patty Fiasco is going to play the weekend of the Wyoming game. On the field, Cole Kelly in a quarterback for Arkansas, and he's handing off back to Dev Wall Whaley. Whaley was used early and often by the Razorbacks, then a win away from Whaley. As soon as Cole Kelly takes over at quarterback, back into the hands of Dev Wall Whaley. Kelly, the sophomore from Lafayette, Louisiana, who started the opener. Given only 36 passing yards and two interceptions, I'm surprised it's been this long before Cole Kelly has made an appearance. Consistency at the quarterback position has been a challenge going back to last spring. And I'll be honest, Carter, I don't know if either of these guys is the long-term answer for this sort of offense. I think some Razorback fans are with you. Whaley, huge hole in the middle of the field, and Whaley takes it to the 35-yard line. Fogle finally brings him down. Devwall Whaley carrying the load. This is just six on six. Bad angle by the safety coming up. You get Lyman up to the second level on the linebackers. It's a huge game. Tapped it so quick. The, the wide receivers on the edge were still looking at the sideline for the play. One of the rare good tackles tonight for the secondary at Colorado State. Nice job, V.J. Banks. It's Caps and Gatlin on the left side of the line right now. One of those positions the Razorbacks are still feeling out. Uh -oh. Whaley right up the gut inside the 30-yard line. First down again, Whaley points it himself. I really think Colorado State has to do some stemming or moving. They're running themselves out of the hole. They're just not big and strong enough to take on this offensive line of Arkansas. Create some movement pre-snap to try and get these guys out of their comfort zone. But when you're standing there, Carter, you're literally a moving target. They have no answer for the downhill running game of Arkansas. So keep it on the ground, Rakeem Boyd. And now he's going to push to the 25. So you're officially five yards away from the red zone. But this is the trouble spot for Arkansas as they've gone one for three touchdowns in the red zone Why they're only up by four. And with Ty Story watching, it's now Cole Kelly at quarterback trying to finish the drive. And this is some of the situations that he would come in in that steamboat package. Even though he's a big guy, he's not necessarily mobile, but he's a super physical runner, as we saw in that third down pickup. Consider his legs as a result here, but I think this down the distance is a pass. And here it is. Kelly, deep shot, in zone. It is caught, touchdown. Arkansas, Petway holds it in, and Cole. Kelly leads a touchdown drive for Arkansas. The TD pass goes 25 yards. And the first drive of the second half for the Razorbacks is a touchdown drive. He turns around. He catches the ball. That left foot immediately goes down. They're trying to see. Certainly his right heel hits. But to me, he demonstrated control of that football. That's going to be a touchdown. And now it's in the books. Limpert's PAT somehow sneaks in. So the challenge for Arkansas after only one touchdown, settling for field goals in the red zone and the first half. Forget about the red zone. Just take it from 25 yards out and go over the top of the Rams. Cole Kelly, Lafayette, Louisiana with a TD pass. Arkansas back in the end zone, back in control. Pretty good efficiency from Cole Kelly, his one pass, 25-yard touchdown. Well, Colorado State for trying to blitz. They just couldn't get home. It's going to be really hard for them to get back in this game if they can't get something going offensively. So 125 rushing yards for Devois Whaley. That is what the Colorado State offense has combined. 
Whaley 125, Rams 125. Carter Samuels over the middle. This will help. It's Butler, the tight end again, across the 50-yard line to the 45. Gain of 30 from Carter Samuels to Butler. Great play call there. They brought Butler across in motion. Does a nice move to get himself open on the quick slant and one-on-one -on -one coverage. And the Rams are on the move. Longest offensive play of the game for the Rams. Off of a short throw, catch and run. Carter Samuels in the air again, complete again. First down to Williams. Kansas wins at Central Michigan, and Kentucky is giving Florida a game. Carter Samuels pops, loses the football. It's loose on the ground, and it looks like the Razorbacks have it. Carter Samuels lost it, and a game hops on top of it. The Razorbacks take it away with an 11 point lead. Watts knocked it out of there. A game got on top of the football. Second turnover by KJ Carter Samuels. A pick, and now a fumble. Armand Watts was recruited by Missouri. Here he is here. He's just going to beat the right guard, Jeff Taylor, on an outside rush. Watts' hands as an offensive lineman, you got to get a punch. Carter Samuels is forced to pull the ball down. The pocket just collapses. The ball comes out. McTelvin Aguim is there to happily jump on it. After the biggest play we'd seen all night from Colorado State offensively, moving the ball beautifully down the field. Their offensive line breaks down up front. Credit the back end of the coverage and another huge turnover for an offense that just looked pretty good through the air in the previous series. Kelly back at quarterback, Whaley back in the backfield. That's a shovel toss, and that's Hammonds. Uh -oh. Has the edge, has the 50. Hammonds down the sideline, inside the 20. He'll take it. Touchdown, Razorbacks. Hammonds breaks it, a 64-yard TD. Cole Kelly is two for two, passing with two touchdowns giving the Razorbacks a spark on the road in Fort Collins. That is the longest, shortest pass of Cole Kelly's life, I'm sure. But again, bad angles, missed tackles, good perimeter blocking by Arkansas. And the sudden change, that is the best way that you could do a nice job of moving the football down the field. And for an offense that was quiet through the air in the first half, Carter, what can you say? Woo, pig suey. Aaron Taylor nailing it. I even did the arm thing. <laughs> They're called. They're called now. And now Arkansas in command. Two touchdowns to begin the second half. Chad Morris with a round of applause for the offense. Razorbacks now rocking on the road. Back-to-back -back TDs by Arkansas to begin the second half, 27 to nine. Uh-oh. Yep, Arkansas gonna bring it out against the advice and should have taken that advice. Let's see, 14, that's a difference of 11 yards by bringing it out. Yards. Kenzie in the backfield with Carter Samuels. On the roll to the outside, Preston Williams has 35 out of bounds. I mean, 5.21 left to go in the third. Game's not over, but Arkansas has to mess this up to allow Colorado State back into the game. Or Colorado State has to make some plays. I think it's easy to say that, but with the way they've been playing defensively, it's going to be hard for them to do it. If they get some points, Arkansas can run this clock out and go to a four-minute offense pretty much any time they want. And now they've added the ability to pass the football. The pressure now is on this Rams offense that has struggled all night long to move the football. Carter Samuel's going to keep it on third down, get enough to move the chains. You're still in negative yardage in the rush game for Colorado State tonight against Arkansas defense. And they gave up 200 rushing yards a game last year to the Razorbacks. I mean, one, one game into the season, you don't want to judge too much. Game and a half, but minus four at this point for the Rams. Carter Samuels back to the air, deep shot, caught. Butler inside the 25, he goes rolling inside the 15. Butler 
hangs on to the football and takes it inside the five. Pulley nearly ripped it away, but it's a gain of 56 to the tight end, Butler. Great move by Butler on the one-on-one. -on -one. This was a matchup that they wanted. For a tight end, my man can move, and now the Rams are down here in the red zone trying to get back in this ball game. First and goal, first red zone trip. Carter Samuels complete to the outside. Nothing much doing. Wise makes the catch. Tonight's red zone brought to you by Verizon. The first time we've had a chance to tell you that for Colorado State. <laughs> Three for four touchdowns. Problem is they just haven't been getting to the red zone enough so far. We haven't seen Brendan Fulton back out there either. To start this second half, it was Fulton and Butler that really got this offense going. Watch KJ Carter Samuels' legs or tight end pop passes. Carter Samuels, there he is on the run. Razorbacks were ready and dropped Carter Samuels for a loss on second and goal. And I'd say Dejon Harris bumper pull together. Harris has earned the right to give them a tumbo. Bad angle that time by Carter Samuels. Went too far lateral, probably should have took it up inside a little bit earlier, but that's really been the story of the night for the Rams. There's just no room to run inside. And this has to be four down territory, down 27-9. He got third and goal, under three minutes to go in the third. No question. On third and goal, Carter got Samuels it. over the middle, touchdown! It's Preston Williams into the end zone. The first touchdown of the night for the Rams. Well, the big 56-yarder to Butler sets it up. Preston Williams finishes it, and the offense is staying out there to go for two. To try and make it a 10-point game. They're going for two here to make it a 10-point game, make it 17 to 27. Every two-point chart in America says that this is the right call. Bobble got him Matthews and it's a touch two-point conversion <laughs> after the touchdown It's Butler who holds it in And sure enough a 10-point game with 246 to go in the third TD Carter Samuels two-point conversion said the Razorbacks would have to mess something up After Arkansas had a 27 to 9 lead Warren hits a knee, touchback. Razorbacks will get it again at the 25-yard line. Whaley, right side. Gets maybe forward of the 45. If you're Colorado State, you got to think about bringing your safeties down even closer, but that leaves you susceptible over the top. Whaley has a new career high. Here's another shovel. Warren on the edge. Rams are ready for it this time. And a tackle for loss on the edge. Trey Sutton. I'll tell you what, Jordan Fogle got lucky on that time. He was setting the edge out there, the force player on the end. He's lucky that the back tripped, but here's another third down in critical situations. Colorado State's been able to get themselves off the field. They've had success and been burned blitzing. What are they going to dial up here on third? Thirty five seconds before the fourth quarter in a ten point game on third down to the out to the sticks coming back to catch the football. That's a terrible spot. Yeah, and Petway makes the grab, but he is going to be short. It's fourth down. <laughs> it is fourth down. Cole Kelly says, yeah, it's feel like they should move it and that's not what the official is going to do so you got fourth down coming you've got a 6'7 258 pound quarterback sneak this sucker well this is the end the third quarter we will begin the fourth quarter with a fourth and one for Arkansas in a game that is getting tight in Fort Collins 27 17 the fourth quarter will begin with fourth and one Arkansas two touchdowns to begin the third quarter take command then the Rams got themselves back in the game with a touchdown and two-point conversion First play of the fourth quarter is going to be fourth and one and the Arkansas punting unit is out wow. They're averaging six yards a yeah. carry. Yeah fourth and one 
A 258-pound quarterback, and the punt unit comes out. It's too conservative for my liking. I'm an offensive lineman, so if you can't get a couple inches, especially after you've rushed for almost 300 yards, I'd be offended if I was an offensive lineman for Arkansas. Bauer will punt it away. Hits it at the 40. Full of BC. Johnson's going to let it hit the 15. There's a flag down. Now he scoops it up. Johnson driven all the way back to the five. Rams from inside their own five-yard line. Play action. Carter Samuels, quick hitter. Out of the backfield. That's Adam Prentice, the fullback, who makes the grab. That's a good play out of your own end zone. Certainly was. Well designed, well called, well executed. Play action to the play side. Prentice acts like he's going to block the end. Cuts up underneath, gets cut by the tailback. It essentially becomes like a pick play. It gets a nice chunk of space on first down. Breathing room on second down for K.J. Carter Samuels, the grad transfer from Washington. Izzy Matthews takes it nice right run. side. That's one of the best runs of the day for Colorado State. Sets up third down and manageable. <laughs> anything, right. anything that's not a negative run is a positive run for this team tonight. What I liked about it, look at his eyes. He stays play side and he hits it. There's no dancing around. He's just trying to get vertical. He's a physical runner. Nice job getting a very makeable third and three. On the rollout, Carter Samuels pressured. Toss is complete. Oh, the BC Johnson has the first down across the 20. Rams down by 10. They took possession inside their own five, able to move the chains. Initially, it was beautiful coverage by Arkansas, but Ola B.C. Johnson, since that, bought himself some time. Carter Samuels goes up, throws across his body, picks up the first down. Great patience. Body takes the handoff. He gets only a couple, trying to turn the corner. The Razorbacks were there. Harris, junior from Harvey, Louisiana, on the tackle. He's a big, thick downhill runner, 225 pounds, six foot one. He's a thumper. They missed him during the suspension. Going to him here in the fourth quarter with some fresh legs, but not enough gain there on first down. You're back to zero. That's good news in the rush yards. Carter Samuels over the middle in the air, complete. Oh, Johnson targeting. again took a huge targeting. hit. He's Curl, on. and here it is. He's gone. That's Cameron Curl. He's had a heck of a game tonight. The rules There's designed no foul to do. for targeting. Yep. The result of the play is a first down and 10 for Colorado State. I think that was officiated very well. You throw the flag on the field because it looks like targeting. Then the replay booth can have all of those looks at it to say that, in fact, was a shoulder to the upper part of the chest, and that's a clean hit. And therefore, you pick up the foul, and Curl stays in the game. So. Not a mistake, I don't think, to throw the flag there. Not at all. Because it's reversed. That's exactly how they want to officiate it. And I guarantee you, next summer when we look at when we look at all these film, Oof. that's a textbook teaching tape in a moment of exactly how you're supposed to execute that. Great job by this officiating crew. Still an 18-yard game and still an issue for Arkansas because now the Rams are rolling to get within striking distance. To the outside, that's Matthews. Izzy Matthews tripped up. I like what I'm seeing out of Carter Samuels. He's hanging in that pocket. A week ago when there was pressure, he was taking his eyes from down the field and getting happy feet. He's not doing that tonight, and they're moving a the ball as a result. Carter Samuels, downfield, caught. What a grab. Preston Williams holds it in in heavy traffic. Right over McClellan, Williams goes up to get it, and the Rams are rolling again. Single high safety, one-on-one, -on -one. virtually no defense of that. Look at the hand strength and the body control by Preston Williams. John Snyder, the general manager for the Seattle Seahawks, is here, and he is one of the players he's very interested in seeing. First and goal, K.J. Carter Samuels. Long drop, end zone, it is bobbled, and it is caught! Touchdown, Preston Williams has another remarkable grab. Touchdown, Rams. And from down 27-9 in the third, it's now a four-point game in Fort Collins.
That's back-to-back -back plays by Preston Williams. Look at that. The concentration, not giving up on the play, looking it into your hands, doesn't get any better than that. And look at the Washington transfer, K.J. Carter-Samuels, celebrating the big catch for the touchdown. The former Tennessee Vol hoping to give the Rams a chance late to upset the Razorbacks from the SEC. Wyatt Bryan's PAT makes this a three-point game. Ten straight completions by K.J. Carter Samuels. The last two go to Preston Williams. And the Rams indeed stored. 15 straight points for Colorado State. The Rams are on the comeback trail. It's a three-point game. Late night in Fort Fun, Fort Collins, Colorado. AT, you go back to fourth and one for the Razorbacks. They elect a punt. And then Colorado State goes 96 yards after that punt rather than the Razorbacks going forward on fourth and one. Inexcusable, and I hate to say I told you so, but with the way this offensive line was playing, you give up your right to control the line of scrimmage, and they paid for it mightily. Braxton Davis kickoff. Warren will have a chance. He takes it inside the five. One of the SEC's best. Warren across the 25. He's caught from behind at the 27. Former Vol Williams, the former Washington Husky, Curtis Samuels, and said Williams had a bounce back tonight. He has for the Rams. Kelly at quarterback, Whaley in the backfield, Devin Phillips on the stop after the Razorbacks get four more on the ground. My guess is this ball won't be in the air very much on this drive. I think if you're Arkansas, you don't want to get too conservative and sit on the lead too much, but you do want to feature your run game. If you can continue to get four yards a clip, keep feeding the beast. I'm going to toss it here. Quick hitter. Nance spins out, and he is dropped for a loss. Campbell comes up to get the tackle for loss, bringing up third and long for the Razorbacks. Great job by Campbell finishing on this play because initially Banks misses the tackle right there, but Campbell stays alive, and that's the sort of hustle we didn't see in the first half that makes plays defensively. Call it third and eight. <laughs> Kelly on the roll. Kelly is going to toss it. Dangerous, incomplete to the sideline. Petway was open for a moment. The Rams close. Trey Thomas gets the pressure on Kelly. It's a three and out for the Razorbacks. They'll give the football back to the Rams, clinging now to a three-point lead on the road. You get four yards on first down, get cute, throw the ball, lose two yards, then throw an incompletion. Why is Arkansas getting away from the run game? Olabisi Johnson is back. Bauer, the freshman punter, hits it at the 17. Johnson didn't call for the fair catch. Another dangerous move there from Johnson. Manages to hang on. Colorado State football down three. This game was 27 to 9 in favor of the Razorbacks. Colorado State has come charging back. 9-22 Colorado State football. So Carter Samuels over the middle, open again. Williams again to the 45-yard line. Preston Williams finds a seam in the middle of the Razorback D to move it out to the 45. Just way too soft of a zone coverage. Preston Williams is way better against zone, finding those open holes than he is against man coverage. Snap it in a hurry, handoff. Matthews, first down across the 50. Matthews down to the Arkansas 41-yard line. McClure finally brings him down. Rams are backed up. Get a first down in a hurry.
credit to this coaching staff for not abandoning the run. Ronnie Letts and the play caller tonight. Great call and execution there. Matthews motions out. Empty backfield. Carter Samuels designed. QB run. Wide open. Lost the football. Rams hop on top of it. Carter Samuels on the QB run. Fumbled it. But Colorado State quickly on top. Colby Meeks gets on top of the football, and now Carter Samuels looks like he is hurt. And Telvin Aguim having a huge night, punches that ball out. Six forced fumbles a week ago for this team. Several tonight. Carter Samuels is slow to get up. Well, Colby Meeks makes the play of the night for Colorado State, getting on top of that football. No question. Great hustle downfield. So here's Colin Hill, the sophomore, 0 for 3 tonight, 1 for 7 passing on the year. Two ACL tears. He's coming back from the last one in March, but still voted a team captain, even though he didn't wasn't healthy. And K.J. Carter Samuels won the starting quarterback job. That tells you what his teammates think of Colin Hill high percentage safe throws or turn it around and hand it to your running back don't put this game on Colin Hill who struggled so far this season again you're in field goal range so Hill pumps tosses goal line incomplete flag down Williams gets tangled up with Ryan Pulley and the flag is thrown Hill's lucky that didn't get intercepted I don't like that play call I think they got lucky here good release Pulley is in lockstep, but he kept his hands on him the entire release. Number 11, defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic, first down. Might have gotten away with it, but he pulled the jersey. And now, just as you said, ET, after one play, KJ Carter Samuels is back. Can I speculate after he comes back? Yeah, to sure. me, it looks like he lost his wind the way that he fell on his chest. Let's go down to John. Well, guys, that's exactly what happened when the coaching staff talked to him. He pounded on his chest like he not had the wind knocked out of him, had to sit out one play, and here he's back in the game. And it's first and goal with K.J. Carter Samuels under center. Matthews behind him. Play fake. Samuels, end zone. Williams, it is incomplete. Out the back of the end zone, looking for Preston Williams again. Can you blame him? An incomplete pass, second down. Ball was thrown a little late and a little too high. Great job going up to get it, but his momentum carries him out of bounds. The one-handed catch tries to drag that back toe, but his right leg was clearly out. I really like play action down here. Cameron Butler, your tight end, has had a tremendous night. Don't be afraid to use that guy right there. On second and goal, Matthew's going to take it. Pushing to the three-yard line to bring up third and goal from the three. That was a run-pass option that they elected to run and hand off because Cameron Butler acted like he was blocking and then released. If you get in the end zone, you take the lead. If you get three, you tie the game with under six, and you really put the pressure on Arkansas. You dial up your best inside the five-yard line play when you're down here. Colorado State doesn't want to tie this game. They need to take the lead here. Get it to your best playmaker's hands. Carter Samuels backpedaling, tossing to the end zone. It's incomplete. Missed it wide. Wise was the intended target dragging across. So here's the field goal unit coming on. Fourth and goal. And Wyatt Bryan, who is three for three. He's hit from 55, 46, and 44. So this one counts as a chip shot after that. Sometimes those are the hardest, Carter, just like short putts. This is a bad angle. Twenty two yarder to tie it is good. Eighteen unanswered by the Colorado State Rams. Five nineteen the pressure all on the Razorbacks tie game at Fort Collins. All week in practice 0 and 2 with an SEC opponent facing them. They didn't lay down. They've responded and it's been extremely fun to watch here in the second half. Short kick bobbled and the Razorbacks falling it around the 20 yard line. Miss. Arkansas run the dang ball. Whaley does it and falls forward for a gain of 10. 
on first down. Sutton finally makes the stop. I'm yep, move the chains. I'm almost offended for the offensive line mm -hmm. for them. On a fourth and inches situation, to me that sends a message that you don't trust us up front. When they were averaging six yards a carry, that was the first play of the fourth quarter, punting on fourth and one. But now, with under five minutes, you're, you're in your four-minute offense now. Colorado State has two timeouts, but the Razorbacks can control it. Fake the shovel toss, give it to Whaley. Straight ahead, he falls forward. That's five more yards on the ground. And what I like what I saw there by Cole Kelly, he snapped the ball with six seconds left. That 40-second clock bleed it all the way down to about five or six seconds. Kelly in no rush again. They're firmly in that four-minute offense now, even though you started this around five minutes. Snap this one with 11 and hand off Whaley again. Only gets a yard, maybe two. So now you got third down and four. Watson on the stop. This is an interesting situation. I think you continue to run it. Maybe you do a bootleg and give a two-way go to a quarterback that's pretty heavy. Colorado State has to be expecting run, which is why a play action call or a two way go is probably a good call. But given what we saw earlier, turn around and hand it off. Go naked. Kelly oh rolling on third and four. Oh Kelly's going to take the sack at the 25 yard line. Emmanuel Jones off the training table, back onto the field for a sack, forcing fourth down. Nothing to say here, Carter. Terrible choice of play call. You motion your back out of the backfield so he can't help in protection. And for a team that has struggled mightily in this early season to get to the quarterback, the biggest sack by far for the Rams was a big one. And so now, Colorado State's going to get the football back in a tie game. Johnson makes the grab. Johnson tripped up. Lola B.C. Johnson doesn't fair catch. 2.38 to go. Ram football tie game. Tied at 27, 2 minutes, 38 seconds. Both teams have two timeouts. The Rams have scored on their last three possessions. So a touchdown, two-point conversion, touchdown, and field goal. 18 straight for Colorado State. And they will have a chance to take the lead. With a football in 238, K.J. Carter Samuels missed all of one play after he had the win knocked out of him. And the graduate transfer from Washington trying to lead Colorado State to an improbable first win of 2018. They're 0-2. Blown out last week versus Colorado. And now a comeback against the Razorbacks. Kinsey, shovel, completion to the 46. Your strategy here is positive yards, first downs, then get out of bounds in that order. Because of the two timeouts, you can work the edge of the field. They just ran. That's not a bad call. Remember, their kicker, Wyatt Bryan, has made a 55, a 46, and a 44-yard field goal tonight. Time is on the side of the Rams here. Carter Samuels hit as he throws on second down. It is downfield caught, sliding to make the grab. Preston Williams inside the 30. And now with two minutes, the Rams have nothing but time. That was great pass rush by Arkansas. They get to him right as he throws. There's no velocity on the ball. But Williams is able to redirect and come back to it for a huge game. J.J. Carter Samuels should milk this to about five or six seconds. Well, they snap it with seven, hand it off. Nothing much doing there on the ground, but again, this is a chance just to run clock, so... Arkansas has got to take a timeout here, and they do. Timeout, Arkansas, second and a half, 30 seconds in length. You can't afford to play it safe when there's so much on the line. This coaching staff, in my opinion, in critical situations, should they lose this game, will look back on those moments where they played it safe and regret them. One timeout left for Arkansas. 
Curtis Samuels, play action, complete. Williams over the middle, he has it for a first down at the 15. And the Rams can burn more clock after a 14-yard completion. Second half, 30-second timeout. Beautiful release that time. And how about the aggressive play calling? Ronnie Letson trying to bleed the clock. Anything can happen. Arkansas has gotten their hands on the footballs all night long early on in this game. Colorado this, State is set up right now to win the football this game. This is ball game. If you're Arkansas, you've effectively lost this game. It's first and ten. That last play was the nail in the coffin for the Arkansas Razorbacks. It was 27 to 9. So here's the handoff. It's Matthews on the right side inside the tent. Go down. Matthews goes down. Don't even need to take it into the end zone. Now you have a chip shot field goal for a kicker who is four for four. And Colorado State is in position to beat the Arkansas Razorbacks for their first win of 2018. How about the team that couldn't run the ball all game long comes up here huge. Absolutely the right decision by there for Matthews to go down rather than take it in the end zone. No question. So now 15 seconds, 14 seconds. Curtis Samuels is going to hand off into the end zone. Stood up, touchdown! There's eight seconds on the clock. But for now, Izzy Matthews into the end zone. Touchdown, Colorado State. Trailing 27 to 9. 24 straight by Colorado State. Eight seconds away from an upset of the Arkansas Razorbacks in incredible comeback fashion. Brian's PAT, rather than the three from Brian, you get seven, but you leave eight seconds on the clock for Arkansas paging Hunter Henry. We have certainly seen the Hunter Henry heave, but what you're doing is a squib kick to disrupt the ability for Arkansas to return the football. If you do it properly, it's probably a 75-yard pass that you're going to have to throw in the air. Anything is possible in college football, but fate seems to be on the side of the Colorado State Rams. Mike Bobo told us this week, we may be 0-2, but the story of this season has not been written yet. What? Battered and bruised and injured and maligned, and yet Colorado State digging deep for 25th Street in position to upset the Razorbacks. Davis, there's your squid kick. Razorbacks fall on it. Six seconds showing on the clock would take a miraculous play for Arkansas. Only once before has Arkansas lost to a Mountain West Conference opponent. This is the first time they've ever gone on the road to a Mountain West Conference venue. Preston Williams is back in coverage for Colorado State. Razorbacks needing a miracle. Kelly's going to throw. It's complete. Stewart on the edge. There's a toss back. Petway. Petway looking for help. It is picked up, scooped up. Kelly, that cannon shot doesn't matter. Kelly's going to go down. It's still loose. And now it's official. The Colorado State Rams charge back with 25 straight to upset the Arkansas Razorback. It's a final in Fort Collins. Rams 34, Razorbacks 27. Colorado State digs deep to upset Arkansas. For a man who spent 10 days in the hospital while his team was in training camp, 
This is going to one be a victory that reverberates very deep for Mike Bobo and Colorado State football. Down amidst that celebration, John Schriffen with Mike Bobo. Carter, thank you so much, Coach. What a comeback. You're down by 18 in the fourth quarter. What changed? Well, we talked about all week of believing. And, uh, you know, we're not having hope. Hope wasn't a strategy. It's about our preparation. Fight for 60 minutes. And we talked about not growing weary. Keep throwing punches. I'm just so proud of this team for believing, playing, playing for each other, played for 60 minutes. We're far from a perfect pro pro uh, product. We had a long way to go as a football team, but that was the first step tonight of playing for 60 minutes and playing for each other. It seemed like every time you guys needed a first down or a big play, you went to Preston Williams. Talk about his performance tonight. Yeah, I, I thought he played exceptional. I really thought everybody played exceptional, but he made some big-time plays in some big-time situations. Our defense in the second half, both their neck, played some, played, made some great third-down stops. They just kept playing. Guys were talking on the sideline, Coach, we believe, we believe, and that's part of it. you got to believe in yourself and believe in the guy next to you, and that was the first step. Again, we got a long way to go as a football team, but if we'll keep throwing punches and don't get tired of that, we'll have a chance. Last one, Coach, with everything you've gone through this season with your health, you start the season 0-2. People counted you out. No one thought you could beat Arkansas. What does this win mean for you right now? I mean, it's 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 like life, man. What are you going to do? Are you going to fold it? fold up and, and run or you're going to fight and uh, that's the great thing about this game of football it teaches me, young men how to fight and not for themselves for somebody else and that's what our guys did tonight coach what a win congratulations thank you no one to celebrate in Arkansas right now but around college football many who love Mike Bobo thrilled to see this result in Fort Collins 34 27 for Aaron Taylor John Schriff and our entire crew I'm Carter Blackburn Mike Bobo gets to celebrate with his father George Rams win it in dramatic come from behind fashion now we send you back to New York Brent Houston and Kevin inside college football